Hey, good morning, friends. How we doing out there in bike land? All you wing nuts, nut balls, gearheads, spear freaks, and the lot. So, do a little video today. Uh, just getting ready for my surgery tomorrow. Thought I'd post this up. Had a somewhat meaningful conversation with a couple of people yesterday, and uh, wanted to bring this to uh, everyone's attention. I got some different carbs here. We got the um, SHA or Shaw clone of um, Chow. Oh, the Italian knockoff. Um, this was an old pumper, an actual NT. Pretty hard to find this. Um, yeah, maybe not. Uh, here we have a speed with a generic um, this is the uh, 80cc which is also pretty much uh, NT but Bofang is the one that makes that um, it's a CDH um, power carb um, haven't had a chance to run it yet but it's got some um, breather valves on it Anyway, uh, so yeah, wanted to talk a little bit about um, not so much the carbs, but um, intake. You see here we've got a G2 revalve. Um, this is an offset that I've cut uh, to modify a bike. Had a couple of them. This is actually, one of these is on somebody else's motor, but this was a... Uh, the other side of that piece if you want to call it that would have been so what that is for is oh here we got some other ones I'll explain this first regular square almost matching some ports and you got your round uh, somewhat matching some ports and um, this is of course the little fatty um anyhow so uh some of the stuff that i could tell you it, no that's the phone ringing let me just silence that um some of the stuff i could tell you on some of my builds you can see i will do some shaping um i've left this scuffed not real heavy but just enough enough for the fuel to catch um there's a reason i do that I could also explain that for you um this one you can see it's been um polished and opened um uh, i think this one yeah you can see some of the residue and kind of a bit of pitting in there I left that as it was because I was running it naked and um, just kind of wanted to help it along. Anyhow, so let's see here. Oh, yeah, got some uh, other stuff here. I think, yeah, this is a uh, 32 millimeter. So you can see the difference here those kind of line up that does not uh, anyhow but um, yeah with the, uh, with the different setups and tuning um, a lot of the work I do not to say I wouldn't but I don't take the time to balance a crank my biggest performance evaluation with these is port work and once you get your setup on a wheel and you have your numbers where you kind of want them, depends what you're going to do. Now, if you're going to run a reed valve, you've already got a bit of measurement coming off the back. I'm going to call this roughly five inches, something like that. Um, with your carburetor on there, after it's jacked in, you're coming to, probably going to be around six, seven inches. So there's some different reason um, 
for these intakes and the length um, two inches is primarily for your low end four inches if you were to put something on here and offset you know, it won't even go on there it's got to be cleaned um, if you were to put something on there and add an additional amount of tubing a couple of inches and then jack your carburetor in at four inches you're looking at mid-range power and at seven inches that's uh your top speed this is going to come into play when you're using um more so probably a reed valve some people like to go straight on the reed valve and come right off on the carb uh, see, i think that one is actually a 32 or 33 rather but um <clears throat> depending on what you want to do um it does affect um, your carburetor's overall performance as well so I know there's some misinformation out there um, just want to clarify I don't pretend to know it all I've been doing this for a long long time off and on but I'm still learning and uh, just trying to help other people out out there uh, I got some people that have been coming on my channel and arguing with me and telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. You know, if you're a friend and you want to banner with me and explain something I've done wrong, that's great. But I don't have time for the bullshit. You know, go somewhere else and annoy somebody. You know, I know what I'm doing and I know it works. And um, <laughs> there's a reason I do what I do. I don't, you know, I don't just go into my, my heads and just start grinding away at random oh that looks like it might work good uh i'll put it on the bike you know there's a reason for a port wheel timing wheel there's a reason for a lot of these different setups and and how people modify them um, you can get into some really aggressive performance with a simple stock motor uh, which i was trying to explain earlier you know you had a balance of crank um this is actually a little bit of a different crank too it's a good one zl but you'll see a lot of people have the uh, kind of like a anodized uh, brass coating over top of that it's just uh straight steel on that one um but yeah oh what was i saying yeah so balancing the crank taking it lightening it is gonna bring your rpms up um putting either a two or a four or a seven inch roughly um intake sleeve on your on your motor is gonna affect it's gonna affect the speed um just tuning your carburetor and getting it right now that's gonna affect your speed um the video i did yesterday out in the woods for uh, leonard uh, I had a filter on that and I had to stop and um, tune it a little bit. Usually I run just the screen um, on my setup and when these things got started that's all they had. The filters came along later on. Some people will cry, ah, you're going to ruin your cylinder. You need to have protection in there. Dust is going to fly in and score it up. Um, it's possible, you know, a motor moving that fast is pretty much gonna burn anything that comes into its path you might get some minor scarring if it's you know something really big but um also there was somebody out there i can't remember who but they're doing a build with a um what you want to call here um an air horn or um anyhow the vortex um action with these um you're gonna have to run an offset from my understanding i i have tried these just on the straight carb and you can go up several jets your mid-range will improve but your top speed it's always going to bog out the air is going to overpower it you have to have i would suggest at least starting with four inch if not seven inch to run a um uh, anyway, 
um, an air horn or a velocity stack. But uh, also, while I'm showing you that, this is another kind of cover that used to come with some of the Runwells and the Zetas. Um, I think they are on maybe some of the 100s or something. But um, typically you got your little black thing, whatever. Yeah, I can find one in here. It's bad, all this stuff. Up. Bear with me, folks. That's not it either. I don't. I don't have all my stuff out here. I'm sure you guys understand what I'm talking about, though. The generic black three finger kind of inlet that hangs down off the back of the carburetor. If you choose to use that instead of maybe running a um, just an air filter velocity. Um, the air filter velocity is not a bad thing. You do have to watch. They get clogged. Um, they get oily. And if you don't keep them cleaned regularly, you know, get yourself a can of um, air spray at a um, computer store. If you don't have the option to um, use an air compressor and blow it out, you know, like a dust, dust air spray for a computer and just blow them out profusely. Um, because it'll end up causing your bike to be overwhelmed it gets too rich it's not getting enough air this is the um, this is the other one we're talking about though and this sits on the back of your carburetor so it's something like that and then it's on the back of your your model there the air comes through it comes through and it catches on his lip and gets sucked in whereas this kind of a setup is just drawing it in or if you have the uh, fingered one it's got a, a small space that it, it kind of vacuums up through that gives you the best gas mileage this almost acts like a, a reverse velocity stack because it's it's catching the wind it's being forced into it you know as it's forced through it 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 does give you a little bit more performance but at the same time it's it's definitely consuming a lot more fuel than you need to you can get the same speed or better by just running a screen or not even putting anything on there at all so i know a lot of you guys probably know this stuff already i'm just trying to help out whoever i can pass this information along you know um this is a lifelong endeavor for me there's some people out there that just think it's a hobby and uh you know sooner or later they end up realizing maybe it's it's more than that but um if not good for them and you know get your kicks and be gone like the rest of them so seen so many people come and go over the years um there's some guys that have really been around for a long time small performance uh, i bought parts from them I think 15 years back or maybe longer even you know there's there's guys that are really dedicated to this it's what they love and um you, know, you got to give them respect it's uh it's not a game and putting out bad information i know i posted a video before shame the devil you know there's some people out there that are just really throwing out misinformation and and giving this this sport um this hobby a, a bad name and and drawing people away from it but um there's a couple other things i can throw in here real quick we got your uh, ultra copper oh, this is clear but same difference permatex i use the uh the gray gray for my exhaust you put your exhaust in mount it directly in there and uh go without a gasket they do tend to burn up uh, I've had also had problems with the uh, O2 sensor. If you're doing any type of work, taking it on and off, they do get damaged, they eat up. But it's a simple fix, they do last longer than most. Um, Ultra 